Hi gamers, after making video based metroidvania of all time 2024, today I wanted to share with you some really beginner friendly metroidvanias that you should play. If you are new to the genre and find games like Hollow Knight too challenging, these games are perfect for you. Alright then, without further ado, let's get started. The Shantae series is such a unique kind of game. It's a mix of arcade and platform as well as a metroidvania gameplay. As a half-genie, you can bust out some sick moves that let you transform into different creatures to tackle any challenges that come your way. Besides all the cool transformations, you gotta nail the timing on your jumps and attacks just like any other platformer game. It can get pretty tricky, especially on the final level. There are side quests that you gotta do if you wanna 100% the game. And then there are these other side quests that seem like extras, but they're actually necessary to finish the main quests. Haiku, the robot, is essentially just a shorter and easier clone of Hollow Knight with a ruined world populated by cute little robots. The combat is not as flashy as other Metroidvania, but it's sufficient enough for the game to be fun. The boss design is good. Not amazing, but there's enough variability to make it enjoyable and pose a decent challenge. One notable aspect of Haiku is its moderate difficulty level, offering a more relaxed and accessible experience compared to some challenging Metroidvanias. Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth is a nice metroidvania platformer with exploration elements, much in the same vein as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. There are plenty of hidden items to uncover, weapons to farm and a bestiary to fill out for 100% completion. A boss rush mode is also unlocked after beating the game, adding more replayability. The sprite work is very nice and colorful, and the story is surprisingly bittersweet for this type of game. This is a classic metroidvania with some fun innovations in the spells area. Great for beginner and casual players compared to a lot of what's out there. Hawk is a great metroidvania with nice comic style graphics and good accessibility options. The game has a fairly heavy emphasis on puzzles and slightly tricky platforming. The game starts out easy and fun but gradually becomes more challenging, especially in the end game and DLC zones. The combat, while fun, is considered somewhat pointless, with limited enemy variety and simplistic mechanics. Overall, Hack offers a rewarding Metroidvania experience with a captivating art style and an engaging world to explore. Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom is a colorful Metroidvania platformer, a spiritual successor to the classic Wonder Boy in the Monster World series. In this game, you play as Jin, a young boy on a quest to stop his uncle Nobu from using magic to spread chaos throughout the kingdom, turning everyone into animals, including Jin himself. You can transform into different animals, each with their own unique abilities to fight enemies, solve puzzles and progress through the interconnected world. This game is recommended for everyone who loves the Metroid genre, especially for those who are new to it. Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, is like a modern take on Castlevania. It feels a bit different from the old 2D graphics of Castlevania. It's kind of clunky in comparison. The game has tons of weapons and skills you can mess around with and combine. There are these unlockable skills that help you access certain locations and find secrets all over the map. From the combat system, which is pretty intuitive, to the exploration, where the game isn't overwhelming in detail and feels like a natural progression. The game has a couple of bonus playable characters and some bonus modes to try too. So even after completing the main campaign, there's stuff to do and challenges to attempt. Guacamelee 2 is Metroidvania platforming game with a beat-em-up style of combat that involves surprisingly technical input to perform combos. Both of the Guacamelee titles have to be some of the most underrated Metroidvanias out there. The art direction, music, combat, platforming, story, Everything works so perfectly together into one of the best and most entertaining Metroidvanias I've ever played. It's incredibly fun from start to finish, there's so much to explore and find, so many challenges to beat, and the combat alone is so creative, responsive, satisfying, and full of depth, it could be its own thing entirely. Astalon The Tears of Earth is one of the best Metroidvania action platformers that you should not miss delivered with 8-bit nostalgia to great effect. In this game, players have the option to switch between three characters, a warrior, 
an archer, and a wizard. Each character comes with unique abilities for combat, climbing, and puzzle solving. Discovering new things and moving forward are key parts of the game, with lots of hidden surprises to find and enhancements to get. It's a very relaxing game that doesn't require you to invest a lot of time, money, or talent to master. SteamWorld Dig 2 is an awesome Metroidvania minor game which is a direct sequel to SteamWorld Dig 1. The gameplay is fun, you mine for ore, sell it, get awesome upgrades and mods while exploring different areas, solving puzzles and fighting mobs. It's a really simple game with unlockable elements that can make the game more difficult. The Metroidvania style exploration is really satisfying from the beginning and gets better as you unlock more and more resources. Furthermore, it has beautiful art style with vibrant colors and interesting characters with great sense of humor. Islets. Is Metroidvania that suit? If you never touched Metroidvanias before, this might be one of the best introductions to the genre. It's very simple at first, yet has plenty of depth in the later parts to stay interesting all the way through. Platforming is fun and even somewhat challenging at times, but never frustrating because controls are great. Fights are mostly about pattern recognition and learning how to react to different stuff. Story and style both are cute and wholesome. Very enjoyable game overall and doesn't overstay. It's welcome. Alwa's Legacy is nice metroidvania, simple with retro style game that other fans of the genre are sure to enjoy. In terms of combat, it's a very easy game, but I wouldn't say it's a negative, exploration puzzling and platforming are what it excels at. If you played its predecessor, you'll definitely enjoy this too, although this game introduces a bunch of classic metroidvania upgrades that in my opinion make it a little less unique than the original. It's a good game, I recommended this game for newcomers. Metroid Dread is considered a fantastic game in the Metroid-style genre, offering a great blend of exploration, combat, and tough boss fights. The game is all about Samus Aran as she tries to regain her lost abilities on the mysterious planet ZDR. Metroid Dread totally nails it when it comes to gameplay. With detailed environments, engaging enemy design, and tight combat mechanics, Metroid Dread excels in gameplay immersion. Also, the cutscenes made it so awesome, I love how Metroid can look so new and still feel so nostalgic. It's so smooth, and the gameplay is so advanced compared to back when I was a little, that it is able to throw a lot of surprises your way. A new slide and a Valdis Story, Abyssal City, is a Metroidvania gem that you don't want to miss. Combat is pretty complex, combining light and heavy attacks, along with a block, dodge, and parry system. It takes a bit to get used to, learning when to heavy attack to break a block or block yourself. Also, it keeps things fresh when you backtrack through previous areas because the enemies level with you and gain new abilities to attack you with as you progress through the game. Along with that is a fairly deep magic system and your customization through both stat increases and a talent tree that definitely changes the way you play your character in many places. Ori and the Will of the Wisps combines the best elements of modern metroidvanias such as Hollow Knight with the compelling core established in the first game. The emotional journey of Ori and the characters is heart-wrenching, exploring themes of loss, friendship, and sacrifice. The music is also exceptional, with atmospheric tunes that add a new dimension to the game, making every moment captivating. The boss fights are epic, with each encounter being unique and requiring you to use your abilities and reflexes to the fullest. Castlevania Area of Sorrow is a fantastic Castlevania game on the GBA in my opinion. The game introduces new mechanics such as Soul Collection which adds depth and strategy to the gameplay. With over 100 souls to collect, players are encouraged to explore every nook and cranny of Dracula's castle to uncover hidden abilities and secrets. The boss fight may not pose a significant challenge. The standard enemies can provide a tough and engaging gameplay experience, especially in the later stages of the game. That's why I recommend this game for beginners metroidvania or newcomers. And that's it for today. What do you think about this list? I know there are great friendly metroidvania games that I haven't mentioned yet. Feel free to share your best friendly metroidvania games if you think deserve a spot in this list. Don't forget to like the video 
and make sure subscribe this channel if you don't want to miss another great list. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.